It is recording now. All right, folks, we're back at Tucson's Golden Pin Lane. We're ready for title match action in both divisions today. I'm going to grab a seat here next to Ms. Goad. Nope. Ugh. There we go. We'll do a little handheld today. So we got both divisions at once. This is Riley Dempsey going up against Aaron Fauché for the Scratch Division title. And over in the Handicap Division title, this is match. It's James Burt, which is this guy right here. Going up against this guy right here, that's Corbin Hirsch. A couple interesting storylines in the handicap division as uh, James leaves the 4-6 on his first shot. Riley's been all over the webcasts this season, having a phenomenal start to the 2010-11 campaign as James gets the one out of that. He's got a four pin to shout here on what's been a gnarly 2010 Nationals lane pattern that we played on today. Very low scoring. Filling frames is the absolute key. Here's the first shot by a Hirsch in a title match. And there's 10 in the bit for Little Hirsch. We're into season 15 of these uh, Southwest JBT events. So you're gonna do, Corbin, you're gonna do two frames at a time now. So you're up on the left lane. Can we catch a little bit of Aaron here. We're into the 15th season of JBT. We're starting to get to the points where some of our kids from season one and two are starting to bring their kids to tournaments. An old circle of life thing here, and this is uh, the first one to reach a title match from there. As Aaron starts off with the unusual 1 4 10 washout. Second frame strike working for Hirsch. He's giving 27 pins, by the way. He's going to have to win by 28 pins to win the match. So, this guy's dad is this guy right here, Brian, who bowled with us back in season one, had a high finish of fourth that has now been eclipsed by his kid. Aaron at the strange washout, only able to get the four pin out of it. Meanwhile, Corbin's left a 310 split, so we're trying to get some camera work here. There we go. It's going to go hard and straight with the plastic ball at the 310, trying to get the ball to deflect into both pins just like that. Yeah. Big split conversion from Hirsch. He loves it. The demonstrative little Hirsch, loving that spare, yeah. Yeah, really. Riley impressed. James Burke has had one heck of a day, guys. He has led, he led every game of the five-game qualifying block. He started out with a 250 game, a 160 scratch game, which would have been in the cut in scratch in game one, by the way. To start out with 250 with pins and never looked back, held on to lead for all five games. We played Pick Your Poison in both divisions today, so as the one seed, he got to choose any of the other 15 semifinalists. He got by that round, obviously. Got by the round of eight, and in the, just got by the semifinal match here to reach our title match. No problem at all in the spare. James has a high finish of second, right, with us at Cactus a couple years ago. Ticket number 40. Just kind of fires it up there with that lefty delivery, and again, good break to get the split out, leave only the two pin. The stylish Riley Dempsey. He decided to attack these lanes from the far outside, which is interesting. I mean, yesterday we bowled on Cheetah, but it's a different kind of outside than how you would bowl on Cheetah. Very flat pattern in the middle, so not a lot of hold there. So he's trying to sort of play what's sort of the out of bounds. And there's also this other little advantage that on, right on the edge, there's a ton of friction as well. Not like the cheat edge, but just like the edge where the oil machine misses. Kind of hard to describe on that. So he's trying to be as hard, trying to be up the back, up the outside. And Hirsch gets himself strike there. Either way, it was a 410 for Dempsey, which he's only able to get the one out of. Yesterday's cut on Cheeto was minus 47. Today's cut on this Nationals pattern, minus 166. So much more challenging lane condition today. Hirsch now strike working in the fourth frame. That one's going left. Able to get six out of it. Part of the bowling with leverage cartel with Dempsey and Hirsch. Many others. Riley trails by a pin with that open frame. Still early going here, third frame action. 
see it, just how fine-tuned you have to be is that's a pretty good looking shot too and this time comes up high and leaves a four. Hirsch at the difficult cluster. Yeah, gonna leave a back pin from there. It'll take it. Fills up an eight count there. A lot of the higher seeds did all right and pick your poison today. They were, uh, had the antidote more often than not. Corbin was the nine seed. Advanced all the way to the title match. Here's Burke in his fourth. Right in the one-two pocket. Ten in the pit. For the youngster from Green Valley. Oh, and Riley slides by his four. Those are the things you cannot afford in these. When you get into a match play situation on the grind out pattern, you've got to mark your somewhat easy spares because you're going to leave your share of hard or unmakeable leaves as well. So, big advantage for Fauche now. Golden Pin sort of become Aaron's home house now that he's down here for U of A. Here's James looking for the double, getting the seven count, not bad. Did very well on Cheetah yesterday, looking to win his second career scratch division title. Also sort of attacking from the right side. Look, he was further right earlier today. It looks like he's moved in left with the ball that's even less aggressive and has kind of given a little bit of hold. Good look. I do not have a plaque girl yet. Sure. You, you'll be plaque girl? No. Oh, well, not in that jersey. We'll have to discuss. Yeah. I'll be plaque girl. Me and one too. Noted. No. Little Hirsch up in the fifth frame. Yeah, it's six of them. Hirsch rocking the picnic shorts like uh, like he would have last week. I love it. See that creep up style that Aaron's signature for him. Ten in the pit, yeah. Is that a very weak ball or are you just are you is that a very weak ball? You're just throwing it hard over. Got the spare for Hirsch, that's what you're watching. Oh, he chops the two off it. So he's got 74 through five. And James is in the 70s, depending on his count through five, so Corbin still has to make up the full handicap difference in the second half of the game. See where Riley's going to lay the ball down further right of where Aaron is. Trying to use a little more friction. Right there, 10 to the pit. Two hundreds were generally enough to win games today. Heck, one one sixties were generally enough to win games today. Corbin had a huge game last game to get to the title match. A one seventy scratch. A little more of a struggle here this time around. Turnout here, a beautiful sunny weekend down in the old Pueblo. World famous Golden Pin Lanes. Up. Oh, hey! Little fancy footwork at the line, and instead he gets one of the best pin reactions we've seen all day as he slams that messenger over there for a, for a big double. That one's going to cover the 6 10, that Moo Cow ball. Little clap the hand, little pump of the fist. He's happy about that. Are you going to be recording that lane tomorrow? Recording both lanes. Why? Oh, you can go get it. I don't care. You get paid if you ever get caught on camera. Well, we'll catch Fosh first. Oh, yeah. They get four in a row for Aaron. Yeah, another nice shot from James. When you're at James's average level, your idea is to get that ball down the middle and touch the head pin and hope good things happen. So far this game they have is his lowest count has been seven. He'll be awful tough to beat if he can keep that up the last four frames here. Let's see if he can convert this four pin. Nope. Pulled it just a pinch, though, all right. Still in fine shape in this match. Aaron's on a four bagger here. We said that he's looking for his second career scratch title. It would be something like his sixth or seventh overall title as he was the handicap bowler of the year many, many years ago. Not tugged that one badly. Who did he get his first title against? His first title? Uh, El Paso. Some guy, I just, you know, throws it all right. Another 2-7 here. 
Oh, that was me. In, in, in most cases, Riley, you've either won the title or somebody beat you for the title so far this year. You've been in quite a few of them. So. I don't even remember what, what season Aaron was bowler of the year in a handicap, but I want to say like 02 or 03, that long ago. Got into baseball, took some time off. And there he is back, bowling in top-notch form in our scratch division. Burke missed that split before, makes the match closer and closer. Corbin gets seven off there. So a pretty good count in the spare and leaves a pretty makeable spare as well. Could get interesting down the stretch here in a handicap. Brian Zent finished in fourth place today, his first top five in quite a while. And Bethany Baker was fifth. Oh. Ball checks up early to six. And Valerie Swain finished up in third in the handicap division today. So some different faces. Nice job from Hirsch and Despair. Over in the scratch division, Justin Gibbler showed up in fourth place today. And who was third in the scratch? Greg Kern, that's right, Greg Kern. As I'll point out right in front of Derek Acuff, his third top five in three different conferences in three weeks, which Derek Acuff also recently did. Thank you very much, Derek Acuff. Cross lane of the six shouldn't be any trouble for Riley, it wasn't. Both sarcastically happy with their most recent spare attempts. So two spares in a row for Hirsch. Big eighth frame shot for him right here. Had to hook a lot. Hit a tr That needed to hit a tree, as his dad says. It didn't. It got the one, two, four again. Well, he knows how to make it. It's 108 through seven, and uh, Burke now at 93 for seven. So he's made up 15 of the 34 pins he has to make up. 37 pins, or 27 pins, I'm sorry. She's made up just about half of them. And yeah, yeah, give him his uh, third spare in a row. A furious comeback here from Little Hirsch. It's his third spare in a row has got him close to even in this match. Here's Riley tra uh, trailing in the match by 32 pins. Spare working seventh frame. That one hits the friction, oh man. He liked that ball, but just can't get it quite to check up in exactly the right spot. And there comes Burke blasting back with a strike of his own. Big eighth frame strike for that guy. James, like we said, with a career high finish of second, this will be Corbin's highest finish by far of his career. His dad's highest finish of his career was fourth. So, outdoing the old man. I am not. Another good shot by James. Ah, nice. Riley at the four, he whiffed this on this lane earlier. Not this time, though. Spare, spare for Dempsey, and he, he wanted a little more out of those two frames, as Aaron is looking pretty tough. 6-10 for Burke. Got a hook, got a hook! No, didn't quite get there. Gives him 119 through 9, and uh, this, this tournament is in Little Hirsch's hands. Be sure to check out the rest of this video also on YouTube. We're going to hit our time limit here in just a second. This will be the last shot of this. I can... Ah, yeah, 10 to pit for Aaron. Boy, does he look good right now. He's looking great all day long. Real comfortable on a tough pattern. Versus ninth frame. Leaves his third consecutive 1-2-4. Will he make it? Find out in the next video.